Well, howdy friends, Brian Fleshig of Mad River Outfitters and the Midwest Fly Fishing Schools, and welcome to another one of our product reviews. Today we're gonna take a look at a really cool item uh, exclusive to Mad River Outfitters. And in fact, we're gonna bring in a special guest. Let me see if he's here. Bob, are you here? All right, we'll be right out. Let me go get it. All right, friends, we're here today to talk about a really cool product um, called the Fly Holster, right, Bob? That's right. And uh, we've brought our good friend Bob Mullenbach in. Bob makes these right here in the great state of Ohio. Um, and uh, it's, a, uh, I think, exclusive to Mad River Outfitters. I think about the only place you're gonna find them is Mad River Outfitters. And so, Bob, uh, first of all, welcome. And um, tell us a little bit about how these uh, came about. Well, Brian, thanks for having me in today. I yep. really appreciate it. Yep. And, uh, you know, I was researching. I had uh, been into the shop, purchased a, a spay outfit, and I was looking online, doing some research on steelhead fishing. and. And I came across uh, some folks out in the West and an older gentleman had a fly wallet, fly holster around his neck. And I started to Google and say, I want one of those. I want to find out where I can get one. Mm -hmm. Must have had it handmade, couldn't find it anywhere. Still can't find another one anywhere out there yeah. in, in, the, in, the, in the world. So basically I decided I'm going to try to make this myself. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's how the process got started. Cool. Um, so, I mean, these things are absolutely beautiful, and you you call your company R A M, obviously your initials. Yep. Um, and it's custom leatherworks. I mean, these things are absolutely beautiful. Tell us a little bit about how you make them, and like how long does it take to make one of these? Sure, Brian. These are made in the the same style as as making a, a holster for a, a handgun or the old west holsters. Mm -hmm. You know, the same type of process. I start with the raw material. Uh, basically a hide from a cow and uh, I source all the, the hardware and the, the beads and all the material locally and then it goes into a about a 20 22 step process that takes me over the course of about four days Wow um, so it starts off raw veg tan leather it's undyed it's a natural product I go through the process of cutting and uh, finishing the edges punching the holes for the hardware for all the attachments and then it gets dyed and then that has to sit for 24 hours. Once that comes off, I'm also, you know, going ahead and, and stringing the beads and, and tying up the, uh, the lanyards. And then it goes to the, the next phase, which is uh, basically putting the hardware on. And then uh, the, the, you know, the wool gets glued in at the very end. That's the, the last phase. Mm -hmm. So. Um, that's basically the process. Uh, then that you know that has to dry, and then it gets packaged and comes to the shop. Awesome. Well, it's it's really cool to have them here. Oh, we've gotten a great response here in the shop, but we wanted to kind of let the world know uh, through the YouTube channel and tell us about the two different models uh, that we have available. Okay. So I first started with the traditional model. It doesn't have any kind of attachments. It's it's very minimal because. That's really how these are meant to be made is, is, you know, just putting a few flies in here, what you think is going to be uh, your flies of choice for that particular outing and, and go after it. And a lot of guys already have bags and things that they have tool attachments and different things and they don't really want to change that setup. But then there also are folks that like me that like to have everything right there where I need it. Um, and that's why I came up with the guide model where you can attach forceps. Uh, you can go ahead and put your spools on and then also attach any kind of nippers or any other tools that you might be using. Yeah, I, I throw some floating on here. I mean, there's a lot of times when I just run out for a couple hours or some of the, uh, I do some work at some of the trout clubs and this is how I've got this one set up and I've got my fly floating, hemostats, uh, a nipper, uh, some spools of tippet and, and off I go. And you can just, a lot of times I'm fishing nymphs and streamers uh, or or larger dry flies and I just stick them in there and, and off I go and this is all I need to carry I don't need anything else that's right 
you know, uh, it's great for streamers, it's great for wet flies and, and soft hackles, it's great for nymphs. The only thing I wouldn't probably put in there, Brian, are, you know, your delicate dry flies, obviously. Yeah, I agree. That's, the sheep fleece is not the best for that, but especially for throwing streamers. I mean, with streamers, I need a spool of Zero X tippet um, and my hemostats. And, and you can see from mine, Brian, I've been out streamer fishing. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, yep. it's, it's loaded up with streamers and you can hold a lot of flies and put uh, several dozen uh, streamers in here, no problem. Yeah, just for an evening of smallmouth fishing or what have you, you throw some poppers, throw a couple of streamers in there, a couple of spools of tippet, and uh, that's all I need. It's really a minimalist stream. I, I think another cool feature of this, and remind me, you can easily remove the lanyard, correct, and just use this as a as, as a, a fly as a fly holster. Fly holster, fly wallet. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I mean that's a cool feature of it too. A lot of people are looking for these leather, uh, sheep fleece lined fly holsters, and nobody's making them. Or if they do, they're three hundred dollars. Um, and uh, that's another cool feature of this. You can carry this just as a fly box as well. So. Uh, so, you know, I, I tested this pretty extensively after I, I created one and built one and, you know, used it all winter, uh, you know, just regular winter fishing. And this is all I took. This is all I wore for mm -hmm. most days fishing. Um, it was great up in the Erie Tribs for steelhead fishing where yeah. you're changing flies, it seems like, every few few passes or few mm -hmm. runs. And uh, obviously I've used it a lot when I'm in my raft and I don't want to be digging in behind me, getting stuff out of this bag or that bag. I, I can make popper changes or fly changes really quickly. And uh, I actually use it down in uh, Hilton Head. I was on vacation and we saw some tailing reds and we got mm -hmm. out of the boat and went waiting. And how often do you get out there and you're, you're like, you cast, fish won't respond. You're like, I need to change fly. You're not going back to the boat. This is right here. Yeah. You can make the quick change. Yep. Change from a shrimp to a crab, and you're you're back in the game real quick. No, it's really cool, really simplistic, uh, really versatile, um, and I think it's some, something like this was really needed uh, in the marketplace. So, uh, and uh, I guess finally it comes in two different colors, right? Yeah, I have the darker color, which I like to call bison, or the lighter brown uh, color, which uh, we call Java. Cool. And this is called the traditional? This is the traditional. And this is the guide model, which has the beads and the attachments on it. Correct. Right? Cool. Well, there you go, friends. Bob, right. thanks a lot. We appreciate you uh, allowing us to have this as an exclusive here at Mad River Outfitters. Uh, of course, you can hit the links down below and uh, check these out on our website. As always, free shipping on any order over 25 bucks. And if you have any questions, you can give us a call right here at Mad River Outfitters. Um, we'll answer right away. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Yeah, you bet, man. Appreciate, Appreciate you being here. If you like this video, hit subscribe. It helps out a lot. And check out these videos. We think you might like them too.